Hey, what's up, guys? Joker here, and I hope you're all doing well as we're going into this weekend. In case you haven't noticed, I got, a, I got a new chair here today. It looks kind of exactly the same as the last one, but this one's a little more comfy. It's got memory foam in the ass, which means every time I get up and come back to it, it still remembers that I have a huge fat ass. But first, today's video is brought to you by LevelGo.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for under $16, Microsoft Office 2016 for $40, and Microsoft Office 2019 Professional Plus for under $80. And if you use my code PTL20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off of Windows 10 Pro, or you can use the code PTL15 to get 15% off of the entire website when you use the links down in the description below. So today we've got a few topics to get through in the world of tech and gaming. First off, we're going to be talking about Microsoft Windows 10 and the May 2019 update and some of the changes you can expect to see coming along with that, particularly in regards to the update process itself. Also, the Division 2 has gotten a massive content patch today, releasing the World Tier 5 Title Base and Stronghold, as well as a whole laundry list of other features and changes, which are absolutely incredible. And we've also got a gameplay trailer for the new World War Z game, which is actually looking pretty good. But first, we're going to start off with Windows 10 with the May 2019 update. As the name would suggest, you could probably expect this to launch sometime in May of 2019-ish, which is, well, next month, isn't it? Um, it is expected to release on the preview ring in just about a week's time, and they are saying they're going to let it spend a little more time on the preview ring, um, you know, moving forward here with really all of the Windows updates. It sounds like Microsoft has taken a lot of feedback, uh, finally, ever since Windows 10 came out, about how updates are provided to people, and it seems like this is going to provide users with a little bit more granular control over when their updates are actually well updated. So the way that it's going to work now with major updates like this one coming and also if you th remember like the October 2018 update which had a lot of issues when that first came out ended up getting taken away and then released again. It had just so many issues and it seems like Microsoft is finally starting to learn from that and people giving them backlash and the way that they're going to do it now is that they will notify you if there is a major Windows update for your system and if they feel that your system is in the right place to utilize this update without any issues and they're going to be using that based on telemetry data from people in the preview ring as well as you know your own system and, and things like that. Now this won't really affect things like security updates so if there is a new security update that they feel that Microsoft feels like you need to you know kind of keep you protected against new threats and things like that on the interwebs then those kind of updates will still get pushed to your system and you won't have a ton of control over when those are applied to your system but for the major updates like this you will be able to decide when and if you install them and for some other updates as well You'll have some more control over delaying them. You'll be able to delay updates now for up to 35 days in one one week increments with a maximum of five. So basically you would need to delay updates for a week. And if you wanted to delay it for another week, you would have to do that over and over and over again. And they would only allow you to do that a maximum of five times. So this is still not a perfect system. It's still nothing like what we had in Windows 7 or Windows 8 or any other Windows before that. And letting you choose when and if you install any updates but I guess it's a step in the right direction, and at least for these major updates, you, now you have the option of whether or not you want to install them. And those are really the ones that tend to really create the big, you know, OS breaking bugs and stuff like that that we see like in the October 2018 update, the Fall Creator update from the year before that. So I do think this is a step in the right direction. Next up, The Division 2. I do want to talk about this because I've been enjoying the hell out of this game. And uh, if you still haven't picked up The Division 2, I highly recommend you give this game your consideration. You, um, Ubisoft and Uplay have just done an incredible job. And uh, seeing this update just encourages me even more to want to endorse this game and recommend it to people. Because it has, you know, the game came out really good at launch, didn't really have any major game breaking bugs. There were a couple of little things here or there, but all of those things, they got fixed right away. And now with this update bringing in new content like the World Tier 5 and unlocking the title base in Stronghold, which we've been waiting for since release. Um, because, you know, once you get to World Tier 4 and you kind of finish a lot of the stuff, you do kind of hit a wall as far as how far you can go in the game. So this is now going to increase that sort of like level cap up to World Tier 5, so that's awesome to see, adding in more activities, things to do, gear to unlock, new gear sets, that's one thing they're introducing in this, is three new gear sets will affect, which will affect how your character loadouts work. They've also released several buffs and nerfs to some of the weapons, 
and skills like that. One of the things that particularly stood out to me was with weapon and skill mods. So with weapon mods previously, there was always a negative impact whenever you put something on. So if I put something on that would improve my reload speed by 10%, I might then lose 15% in my weapon stability and it'll become, you know, less well stable or less accurate. There were a lot of different positives and negatives and they would affect things differently. But now it seems like they've gotten rid of most of the negative effects, although there are still some abilities that do have negative effects, or weapon mods, I should say. But for every single weapon mod that you, every single type of weapon mod that you can put on a gun, there's at least one, if not several options that you can apply that do not have negative effects. Now, there are some also some nerfs that they've done with certain things, things like extended magazines kind of stood out to me. I had been running an LMG class where I had a large weapon, uh, large magazine pouch, which would give me an extra 75 rounds. So I was running around with an LMG that had 175 bullets in it, um, which was absolutely awesome. I felt like I never needed to reload until after a firefight was over, but they've nerfed that a bit, dropped it down to only plus 35 rounds, but also it lost the negative impact of that, which I believe was losing some stability or accuracy on the weapon. So it's kind of a give or take thing here. We got some things nerfed, but other things got buffed. And overall, it seems like it's a lot better. Also, things like the skill powers and being able to mod those. Previously, you would have to have an insanely high skill rating in order to be able to use a lot of the abilities. And it seems like that has become much more balanced in this update where you can actually utilize some of the mods for your skills and abilities in the game. So that's going to make, you know, using a skill build much more viable, I feel, after this latest patch. And these were things that I just kind of thought in the back of my mind would really never get fixed or addressed in the Division 2, or maybe not for, you know, several months, maybe even a year out. But here we are in like the first real major update, only a few weeks after the game is out, and they're already making these changes. So it just makes me very optimistic about this game moving forward in the future. There are a bunch of other changes and stuff like that. If you want a link, I'll leave it down in the description below to the full patch notes, which the patch is available right now. It's, it was out this morning when I woke up. It was about 5.5 gigabytes here on the PC. So if you're a Division 2 player, that update is out today and you can access the World, uh, World Tier 5 content right away as long as you are at least World Tier 4. Next up, World War Z, which is a game based on a movie, which usually these types of games don't really have the best track record, and it goes the other way as well. When you take a video game and make it into a movie, most of the time they kind of suck, and, ga and games made for movies usually also suck. But this is actually looking pretty good. It really does look a lot like a Left 4 Dead clone. There's no denying that. It looks a hell of a lot like Left 4 Dead. Um, but, you know, for a game based on a film, it's actually looking pretty decent, like the graphics, animations, um, the aiming and stuff like that in the game doesn't look very clunky, and all the, the mechanics also look pretty solid as well. Um, the way that it's laid out with its chapters and things, like I said, really reminds me of Left of the Left 4 Dead game, so if you were a fan of that, it seems like you'll probably enjoy this. Um, the game is coming out on April 16th, so we don't have too much further to go until this game is released. Unfortunately, it is going to be an Epic Store exclusive at launch. I'm not sure exactly how long that's going to last. Probably a year if I were to guess, but uh, yeah. It's going to be an Epic Store exclusive when it first comes out, and I, I will check it out. If you guys are interested in seeing performance testing on World War Z, let me know down in the comments below. But I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, and as I said in most videos like this past month, when I get out of here and I'm done working for the day, I'm probably going to go play some Division 2 because the game is really just that good. Um, I can't recommend this game enough to someone that has not picked it up yet. If you played the Division 1, maybe you got bored with that game so you didn't want to get Division 2. I could just tell you that I was in the same boat with Division 1, and Division 2 I have just enjoyed, I would say, tenfold over how much you know fun and entertainment I got out of the first Division game. The first Division game, I pretty much completed the main missions, and I never touched it again, really. The Dark Zone stuff didn't really interest me, but this game, it just seems a lot more interesting, and there's a lot more to do in terms of the PvE side of things, so that's why I just keep coming back to it and playing it constantly, and uh, I can't look, I can't wait till the, you know, future content gets released. There's more stuff coming out on the 25th, like eight-player raids, which look really awesome. I'm considering even picking up the Season Pass um, for this game so that I can get access to some of the other content and uh, special assignments and things like that. So, yeah, if you've been playing Division 2, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below in this World Tier 5 update. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go, and I hope you guys all have a good weekend, and I'll see you either tomorrow or Monday for another video.